<laughs> oh, it'd be funny to leave it in. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Uh, <laughs> we're sick people. <laughs> oh, shoot. That's too funny. All right. So, anyway, so you tell me the story. Um, are you okay, Robert? <laughs> we might have to pause it for a minute. What? Tell yeah. All yeah. right. All right. We might. Well, yeah, we've been cracking. You got to recover from this. We got to recover from this. It's too funny. I've been laughing this hard so long. But you're not laughing. You don't think it's as funny. I'm laughing at you laughing. Oh, fuck. That's crazy. Tell him what what you told me. Tell him. We were were talking dogs, and I said that. We were talking about jujitsu. (laughs) Jujitsu, and then we brought it into dogs, and to Malinois in particular, I just said that Malinois move faster than a staph infection at a jujitsu tournament. But there's some really interesting stuff with all the stuff going on with um, trying to ban police dogs and trying to get rid of um, uh, Schutzen in Germany. That's a big thing they're doing. These guys in Germany are trying to get rid of Schutzen. They're saying it's a dangerous sport and stuff like that. You had some really fun stuff that you and I were talking about on the phone the Mm -hmm. other day. And that was the amazing skill a police dog can possess without ever laying teeth on a person. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of hear some of these stories that you were telling me about um th- these muzzled dogs because mm-hmm. you start you had to, you have this article just that you you wrote about the muzzled dogs mm-hmm. so tell me the story first of all there was the one guy who was um and it's kind of a sad story the guy was, what, was suicidal or something mm-hmm. were you a policeman at that time yep okay yep. so w- what was that story um i was working uh evening shift but it was still daytime uh we got a call um to a house about a <laughs> I we, just keep thinking about the other. Do we have to start over again? I mean, it's, it's, if that's not the funniest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, we need to grow up now. Uh, we can't. <laughs> that's the problem. We were trying to put out the smell. Which, yeah, hey, Oscar Wilde said, um, um, seriousness is the refuge of the mediocre. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Truer words were never spoken, that's especially right. among us. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, but we were talking about the muzzle thing. Yeah. So, um, if you had a guy, which you had, he's suicidal, mm-hmm. you really can't send a dog to do something, but the person could hurt you if you go yeah. in. So tell me that story, because okay. that was really interesting. So we got a call, um, and uh, we arrived at this house. It was still uh, daylight, and a lady came to the door, and she said that her son was suicidal, and that he took the family pistol and went out into the woods behind their house. Oh man, I didn't I know he had a gun. Yeah, he had a gun. Okay, yeah. How old was the kid? Uh, I think sixteen. Young. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, said you know he'd been depressed, but uh, she truly believed he was you know going to kill himself right. out in the woods. So uh, called a few more officers to the scene, and you're wondering how how are we going to address this? Yeah. Do we uh, want to walk in the woods in the daylight when somebody's got a handgun? And um, you're not going to be silent in the woods. You're mm-hmm. stepping on Branches, all kinds of right, twigs yeah. and everything. They know you're there. Um, how are we going to approach this? Uh, we can't leave him in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I put a muzzle on my dog, uh, Malinois named Aris, that mm-hmm. uh, I got it from Ken, mm-hmm. the glider. Uh-huh. And uh, I, we decided, hey, let's... Uh, let's don't put ourselves in a position with a 16 year old kid that's despondent where we even take a chance of exchanging gunfire with him. Sure. But we got to find him and we, we don't want him to hurt himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I decided to deploy the dog muzzled and, um, we, I set the dog loose on a search inside the woods and did you have any location on this kid at this point? No, just the woods. There was a wooded area, uh, behind his house. How big was the area? Several acres. So it's huge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and dense, dense Densely woods, wooded. Indiana. Yeah. Um, summertime and, um, cut the dog off leash and maybe 25 meters in the woods. Uh, we heard the, the sound of, uh, of a struggle. Mm-hmm. And what had happened was the, uh, young man was sitting at the base of a tree with the pistol in his hand and Aris made contact with him and kept him busy until we got up and the kid had had dropped the gun because the dog uh knew how to utilize the muzzle as an impact tool Mm -hmm. we were able to re re, uh uh, recover the gun get the get the the kid out of the woods 
get him to the hospital for some mental counseling and it ended up well. And wow. uh, I just think, you know, the muzzle gives you a lot of options yeah. uh, because we had to find him. Yeah. And uh, um, so when you deployed the dog, did mm -hmm. anybody he would have found? Obviously, the wood. Yeah, it was, you know, he, it's, he's, a, he's, pretty empty area. he's a production of his training mm -hmm. and uh, looking for that down, motionless person. Okay. And that's what he went in to do. And he knew how to effectively use the muzzle, you know, through training. Yep. And it ended well. And uh, I just think that the, the muzzle uh, gave us an option, a unique option to, to end that safely and uh, take care of that young man. I don't know whatever happened to him after that. Yeah. But uh, it was mission success. And it, is, it, is that a comment? Because I've never in my life heard of a police officer deploying a dog with it, wearing a muzzle to do something. I would think you know, you would train with a muzzle to build some kind of frustration to yeah. get a better bite. Yeah. But I, I've never heard. It. I think it's so brilliant. It's what I want you to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've had, I've had uh, quite a few instances where, where um, a muzzle has been utilized, but the... Um, most successes that I've had have been, have been built upon a misfortune that I, that, that preceded that success. Okay. Uh, you know, when I was stabbed, that was, that's when I had my epiphany. Was that with Zane? With Zane. Yeah. Okay. My, my, uh, my very first dog. Mal so Mal. tell me that story. Cause you, yep. you had, Zane, <clears throat> Zane wasn't with you. Zane was in the police car, right? Five feet away from me and, uh, and couldn't help me, uh, because, uh, I left him in the car and uh locked in the back mm -hmm. oh, yeah man so um the, so, so wait so, so, let's get so you get a call right there's a dog there's a you have to go to a residence or something what yeah, happened yeah this was on it's a, a weird story it was halloween night uh -huh. um i think around 2000 and we got called to a family fight and we approached the house it ended up being nothing they were just arguing and we quelled it. And as uh, my other backup had already left, it was a nothing call and I was walking out to my police car and a guy wearing a tuxedo, white gloves and a derby. It was <laughs> Halloween night. He came walking down the street and he started yelling. He said, F the mother effing police to me. Uh, and obviously deranged he had a problem yeah. and i approached him and i said hey uh come here for a minute and he was very uh verbally combative um but uh not forward aggressive okay. on me yet just okay. may, paying more lip service yeah and when i moved closer to him he attacked me and i got into a physical struggle with him the scary thing about being stabbed is you don't know you've been stabbed i thought i got punched wow and where did you get stabbed uh, in the head and the chest. Uh, but lucky, lucky for me, it was a glancing blow uh -huh. off, off my chest. And, you know, I've got pecs of iron, iron. you know what I mean? Like yeah. the poor Titanium. knife. Yeah. But, um, um, so he, we, so, so in the struggle, he, he got his knife. He had it. Uh, oh, had I, it, it happened so fast that, I, that, that, that I didn't see it. Okay. And, um, it ended up being a, a, a 10 inch, it was a crucifix a metal crucifix, 10 inches. And he had, he had, he had sharpened it down into a blade and had uh, the, the, the cross portion of the crucifix, he had it around his fist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but when he, when he came at me, you know, I just, um, just went into kind of a grappling mode. Yeah. And the funny thing that I remember about that was I looked at my car cause I was boom, you know, I wish my dog would help, could help me. Yeah. And Zane was watching us out the window and I'll never forget. He was wagging his tail and uh. I swear to God, the dog was smiling, you know, like looking <laughs> like, are you guys having fun? This yeah. looks fun. And I'm like, <laughs> can I come out? <laughs> yeah, but oh, no help. So didn't they have those remotes on the doors at that point? The, the, some police force had that. Some of them had them, but uh, my police department was uh, too cheap to, uh. but you know, I'll tell you something about the automatic door openers. Um, I never count on electricity. Electricity fails me. Uh, I'm saying at my house, you know, <laughs> right. uh, yeah. uh, sure. I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put my life on a gadget, but it is a nice thing to have, but mm -hmm. to answer your question, I didn't have one. Okay. And, um, um, so I had to, um, basically solve this problem myself. Um, but so yeah. you detained the guy then after that you, you got him. Yeah, detained. we were, we were, I got him in a, a double chicken wing. No, okay. I don't know. I, 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 I held him down. And then, um, another, a couple other officers arrived, 
uh, we got him cuffed and they, they said, uh, when we're there cuffing, they said, he's got a knife. Mm -hmm. And then after we got him cuffed, my buddy put his flashlight and he goes, Steve, you, you've been cut. You're bleeding. Oh, you still didn't know. I didn't know. No, no. I was, I was, oh, uh, man. I was, uh, you know, adrenaline fight mode. Yep. Um, and I didn't know it. And then, then, you know, my face was covered in blood and, uh, shirt ripped and, uh, um, I off, I went to the hospital, but at that moment, you know, I reflected on it and I'm like, I, I never want that to happen again. You know, I, mm -hmm. my sword was in the scabbard and I, I had the scabbard locked up. Yeah. So, uh, from then on, um, it was your epiphany. It, it was my epiphany that I didn't have to be alone if there were no backups, because a lot of times on a police department, uh, you'll go to a call and your backup may be mm -hmm. quite a ways away, mm -hmm. depending on manpower that night. And so if it seemed to be a situation that I was unsure of, uh, I started uh, putting a muzzle on my dog and, uh, and I would walk up to the, to the house or the building mm -hmm. and I had, I had him by my side. And um, actually a, a short time later, I had another incident where, that, where I had my dog out and he saved me once again. What uh, happened there? Uh, trouble with a man, uh, that was the call, daytime. Um, I, uh, when I got the call, I, uh, stopped and I put my muzzle on my dog and I had what, what I called a, a street adjustment where, uh, not a training adjustment is very tight where the muzzle is not going to come off because you're training. You don't want your, your, your trainer to get hurt to sure. the guy that's playing the, the bad guy, uh, just a couple of notches looser in mm -hmm. case it was a big fight. You know, the muzzle could come off mm -hmm. and the, the dog could more properly defend himself. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, when I got the call, I pulled over, uh, put the muzzle on my dog. We got to the call. I got, uh, got out of the car, grabbed my dog on the leash. We started walking up to the house and the door of the house. Sometimes stuff happens so fast. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your reactionary gap, yeah. you know, isn't quick enough to perceive it and act on it. Mm -hmm. Door flies open. A lady comes running towards me screaming. And right behind her was a guy with a kitchen butcher knife running right, right at her. I dropped the leash and uh went to draw my my gun and my dog hit him smacked on like john lynch you know the old defensive back <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hit him like john lynch right under the chin mm -hmm. took him off his feet and but the muzzle didn't come off mm -hmm. but uh i was able to again you know take custody of the guy yeah and uh uh and it worked out i guarantee everybody's going to ask was the dog in danger when he came with that guy with a knife of course he was <laughs> but so Te you. technique you would have been. Uh, oh yeah like but the the dog the dog saved that guy's life right because i, I would have shot him sure you know if and, I, as if you I would have had a perfect right to but if i could have drawn fast enough i don't think i could no. have drawn my gun fast enough yeah. you've seen the the videos yeah. of 21 feet and an edge weapon attack you know to within 21 feet they got yeah. you you can't draw a gun that fast i think it's so, an interesting th that's draw on that a little bit more because it's something people don't understand they say oh that guy only had a knife that policeman shot him there, the 21 foot thing is, is super, super serious. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Talk and that's, that, if that's important. If you're fast, even if it's 21 feet, that's for an officer that's on it. That's correct. And we're very rarely any of us 100% on it. Of course. Um, and that situation where that's the, it's just a trouble with a man call. You get a hundred of those a night. Mm -hmm. Okay. But sometimes there, a little voice speaks to you or the hair stands up on the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um, and as I remember, that guy was wanted for a pretty serious warrant also. Um, you know, he didn't want to go to jail. But, yeah, so it, it worked out well. And, um, again, he wasn't shot. He didn't get shot. Yep. I didn't get cut. The lady didn't get cut. My dog didn't get hurt. So it was a good ending. Um, there is that thing, too. I think that if the guy sees a dog coming, he's like, holy cow, what's yeah. that? They don't think, okay, I'm going to stab the dog. It's, yeah. it's just that you get them off. You know, it's just a crazy yeah. moment. Yeah, and this this was a fast Malinois. Again, faster than that staph infection moving <laughs> through the jiu-jitsu tournament, you know, like that that fast. Right. So it, it happened in a blink of an eye, and we're spending a thousand more times in time explaining the encounter sure. yep. than what it actually happened. It was a blink of an eye. I call that the Sully theory when he talked about, you know, the Sully, the movie Sully. Yeah. So they said, and I talked about it in so many podcasts lately um, where they said, well, you know, he should have done this and he should have done that. And they did the study on how, how these pilots would have, you know, in that same amount of time been able to do something different and not land the plane in the Hudson river. Yeah. But they didn't take into account that at that moment, they didn't have time to prepare. Like if I tell you, what would you have done? You prepare for it. You know, what? oh, I would have done. Let me mm -hmm. think for a second. Hmm. 
an hour later you go, oh, if I would have done this, this, and this, it would have been different. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, to, to make that quick response, you don't, you don't have that. Yeah. And that's what you're talking about. You know, um, it's a coincidence that you bring up Sully because I, I, used, I used that in federal court. I was defending a police officer uh, in uh, Mississippi in the, in the federal court system. The trial was at, uh, in Oxford, Mississippi, okay. where uh, a policeman was accused of, of, of abusing somebody with his dog on a, on a search. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, actually, the person that reported him was a young officer that he was training that was riding with him. And uh, the officer was totally correct in what he did, or I wouldn't have taken the case. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. But the federal, they sent uh, a couple of federal prosecutors out of D.C. to do this trial, and they asked me, uh, uh, well, you're, um, his, his own training officer uh, doesn't believe that he used the right tactics on wow. this guy. And what I said, it? what happened? Can you talk about it? Uh, yeah, it was a passive resistor uh, felony suspect that bailed from a car mm -hmm. uh they uh went into the woods wooded area mm -hmm. where you don't have good visibility um the officer had his dog on leash and he actually located the guy laying down mm -hmm. and he ordered the guy to show him his hands and the guy wouldn't show him his hands was not cooperating mm -hmm. so uh one officer by himself with a rookie that hasn't been through the police academy yet that's just riding along oh, wow. and he sent his dog and the dog bit the guy minor bite not not serious at all he took right. him into custody uh the the uh the rookie went to the police chief actually taped the conversation with the police chief and uh um the uh the officer was indicted and was uh indicted on a federal uh, wow. federal charges so to back to sully though uh when the federal prosecutor was cross-examining me they said you know his uh his own uh the, the officer riding with him mm -hmm. well, I guess uh, so. sees that, you know, sees a lot of problems with what he did. What do you got to say to that? And I said, well, that's, you know, like uh, Sully landing the plane in the Hudson and the flight attendants critiquing how he lied, how he landed the plane. You know, right. you have no, you have not enough experience to critique exactly. what actually went down. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so, so, so the, so the, the muzzle thing with, with the dogs, you, you talk about, it's a special technique where the, the muzzle is, is on enough where the dog could punch with a muzzle mm -hmm. and take somebody down mm -hmm. and we we know we've seen dogs with muzzles do mm -hmm. some serious damage mm -hmm. they can break a rib even or something mm -hmm. like that um but the question i have for you and and, it, and i think it's 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 important to mention is if the dog is trained right why do i have to have a why do i want to take a police dog out with a muzzle on if if the, the dog should be out there biting people yeah. Well, I normally would not deploy it on muzzled, uh, a muzzled dog on situations. I'm not advocating deploying dogs on in muzzle, not at all, because you, the dog has to be able to defend himself so he can save you and, 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 you know, save the bad guy because so many instances, the engagement of the police dog saves, have saved that bad guy from being shot. Yep. Um, so, but why do I want, why do I want a muzzle? on the dog when I'm bringing the dog into uh, when, you're, when you're going in, into an unknown situation yeah. like me I worked on a department with 150 officers I it wasn't a huge department like LAPD mm -hmm. uh, and so oftentimes I'd be by myself and after I got stabbed that's like I say I had my epiphany mm -hmm. and I'm like if it's a strange situation I'm going to bring my dog up mm -hmm. to give me an option to defend myself and also a visual deterrent sure uh, with my dog I go up check it out if everything's cool I walk my dog back to the car and then I go back and I take the report or I wait till backups get there. But, okay. but uh, I'm not getting any more holes in my shirt and holes yeah. in my head. Yeah. Uh, but if, if, I, if I can the, help it, if you brought the dog in without a muzzle, like up to the apartment or house, if there was a disturbance, what would be the difference? I, I, I wouldn't do that because, um, you know, oftentimes there's children and you know, what if a child walks up to the dog, wow. uh, and you know, our dogs, we had this discussion about, you know, the modern police dogs are social and everything, but you never want to take the chance, sure. you know, so I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk the dog in without a muzzle Got on it. that. But Got it. so let's clarify. I wasn't getting out of my car every time with my dog and a muzzle, every mm -hmm. call I took. No, it was that those ones where I could, you know, I was a seasoned officer calls. There are certain calls that worry you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe the name that they mentioned that the person they're having trouble with is a known name. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, just yeah. basic common sense, common yeah. sense will see you through a lot of yeah, I think a lot that's of situations. A, yeah, I think that's a good point. You bring the police, you bring the police dog up, and a little girl comes up and says, "Oh, it's a little police yeah. dog." She hugs him, and 
you know, doesn't and know 99, how. 999 times out of a thousand, Nothing. the dog would love being petted, but right. it's that one time, you know, yeah. uh, you know, just not worth it. Yeah. It's so easily, so easily mitigated by yeah. a little bit of caution. And, and the muzzles on the dogs, like what kind of muzzles are they? Like what, because there's so many different muzzles, right? Yeah. So, so the first muzzle that I had that when he took the guy off his feet, I had a, yeah. that night I had a plastic Ray Allen medical muzzle. That's what I was using for that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, when I got, you know, my depart police departments, some of them they they don't give up the, yeah. the funds that easy. But then I eventually went to the to the hard dog requisite slammer muzzles. Mm-hmm. Um, Those are good muzzles. Muzzle and, and a little bit more oomph to it. Yeah, you know, it's a powerful muzzle. Yeah, it's, it's going to do damage. My favorite muzzle. Which one? The hard dog slammer. Yeah, yeah, love okay. it. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. And the impo- hard dogs got two great muzzles: the imposer and the slammer. What's the difference? Um, the imposer has a little chin notch where you can check the muzzle and, uh, the, uh, the muzzles, how, how tight it's fitting. You just loop your finger through it and oh, okay. pull on it. And it's, it's a uh, kind of cool looking, but guy's an old division one football player and he kind of de- designs his muzzles the way, uh, football helmets fit. Oh, wow. You know, I didn't kind know of that. shape to the yeah. shape to the head. And, mm-hmm. uh, he could explain that better than me, yeah. but yeah, that's, 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 what I, that's what I like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, they look and there's like a reinforcement inside mm-hmm. too over the over the muzzle. Of the yeah, dog, and the dog right? can breathe through it too. Yeah, you know, lots it's of really lots of stuff, so it's comfortable for the dog. He can breathe. But and you you say you can modify it in a way that it can be quick. Re- like you could just click it off on the dog, right? So it's loose. Enough I could pull it up over his head. I could keep it loose enough where I could where I could pull it off his head if I needed, or if there was a. And this is never this never happened, but a, a, a really violent fight with the dog, the mm-hmm. uh, it could be pulled off by the bad guy. Okay, no. and so the the muzzle is if you were to pull it off, you'd pull it up over or down across the over the top of his head and pull it forward. Oh, okay, got yeah. it. Right. And so he'd yeah. be biting over the top yeah. of the muzzle. The muzzle would be under his chin. At that but point. actually, looking for a known suspect eluding capture, I wouldn't deploy in a muzzle. You wouldn't know. No, not. because I gotta I've gotta maximize my safety, the dog safety. Sure. And uh, but what I, what I think is fascinating is what you talked about. And you wrote about it in one of your articles. I hope I can find it because I'd like to post it. Yeah. Um, Wrote you, it in 2003. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's the part where you kind of described how the muzzle should be fit and the way to deploy it and how quickly it could be taken yeah, off. Yeah, and, and told were. a couple of those. I, I told both of those stories in that article yeah. um, um, because, you know, it's based on on real things that happened to me. Mm-hmm. And, again, it's it wasn't geared for those LAPD, you know, the, the big departments. Sure. Uh, but there's so many departments where it's just an officer by himself. Yeah. And uh, that's a scary place to be. For sure. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it. So I think like when you see dogs in muzzles, it's kind of a strange thing, right? It's kind of like a weird feeling or they feel constricted and stuff like that. What did you do to get the dog to actually feel comfortable like wearing the muzzle? Because they'd have it on for that uh, during an uncomfortable period of time. Mm-hmm. What would you do to get them used to it and stuff? So um, I would sit down on the floor uh, with my dog because my dogs, every dog I owned lived in the house with me, slept in bed with me, all my police dogs. <laughs> Perfect. And we'd sit down and we would watch TV and I would have my little popcorn or whatever. And I would put it in the muzzle and sit there on the floor and the dog would be curious, wanting some, and you want a little bit, you can't have it. Mm-hmm. Then keep away. And then slowly feeding him out of the muzzle. And so many people already know this. So mm-hmm. many, the trainers and officers out there, let them get comfortable. There's no hurry to do it when you're trying to do it right. 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 Mm-hmm. So you go sure. slow and, uh, feeding out of the muzzle and then, uh, let them get neutral in the muzzle, let them wear it. I would take a, a one mile jog every day with my dog where he's wearing his muzzle where he doesn't connect, connect it with aggression. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, the horse ball is my favorite tool to use. Uh, the it's jolly ball, the big ball. It's no, it's a, the big, you know, the big exercise ab ball. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of those, but you can uh, at these equine stores or online, you just say horse ball and okay. it's, it's basically an exercise ball with a cover that you put over it so the claws and everything can't rip it and pop the ball. Okay. And uh, I would just let my dog bat that big, big ball and have oh. fun. Uh, hold his leash and the, the, it wasn't a little ball like the jolly ball. It's right. as high as this table and I would pull back and let him, let him uh, bop the ball and it was reactive. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, just like hitting it around the yard, having a good time. And the only reason a dog does anything is to improve his situation. Yeah. And, uh, that's all you need to know, need to know about dog training. And, uh, um, so A equals B, 
muzzle is fun. I mm-hmm. play, so do it through play, uh, and then and then start adding some uh, uh, bopping the bite suit coat. Somebody wearing the coat, bopping good time, good time, and just conditioning. And then uh, there's other things you can do to uh, make the dog uh, a little more serious and the muzzle a little nimonistic mm-hmm. uh, decoy from the decoy, mm-hmm. and uh, it all it all comes together. Wow. And how long would that process take from the time you started, like the first time introducing a dog to the muzzle to the time you can have them actually on a bite suit? Because you said there's no rush oh, to this, right? Oh, really, if, if, if the dog, like uh, the dogs that get imported, you know, you can put them in a muzzle and have them bop, bop, uh, bopping against a scooter or sleeve in the first day. But what I did, I, uh, I like to take my time and, and make them neutral before I connect it mm-hmm. to, uh, to aggression. But uh, if I'm running a... A police dog school like Mike Reaver or Ken Licklight or somebody like that, uh, you know, you've you've got only so much time to complete your school, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you can ex- you can expedite the stuff. But sure. I did it when I had my dogs. Uh, after I would get out of school, I would take my time and, and just uh, do it the way I described mm-hmm. earlier. Mm-hmm. Made it yeah. fun for the dogs. Yeah, so fun. Well and uh, and uh, you know, you may have times crowd control situations where the dog will be in the muzzle for hours, mm-hmm. and uh, they. You know, they need to be comfortable in it. Yeah, It's like me wearing a necktie. I don't wear a necktie uh, often enough. And when yeah. I'm wearing one, I'm like, ugh, I can't wait to get it off. Work. I'm always bopping the ball when I got the necktie. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. But yeah, so it's, it's yeah. conditioning and... and yeah. uh, uh, Making, what, reading your dog. Right? Yeah. Make sure he's having fun yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. But when I say I want him to get neutral, that's because I don't, every time I put a muzzle on my dog, if I connect it all with aggression... Mm-hmm. You know, he, he may be a little more irritable when he's got the muzzle on, you know. And don't you think that a lot of the guys we see training, like who are maybe maybe just in the sport or in, in some of the sports that where they're trying to symbolize more police type work, that they're built, they're, they're putting the muzzle on and that muzzle's on and that dog knows, okay, now I'm going to be doing hard hitting mm-hmm. stuff. And, and it, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, right. like I, I get it. No. And I, like I say, if I was running a school, I would, I would do it that way. But I'm talking my personal dog that I have all, t- all the time in the world. Right. Uh, but but you're saying that you don't want the dog. In other words, you don't want to take a dog out of the car for your situation, which is I think I think it's a really an interesting mm-hmm. thing. You don't want to take the dog out of the police car, put the muzzle on him, and then have the dog think, okay, I'm going to be ramming somebody now, and then it's right. just ramming people because it's an yep. associative yep. training, right? Yep, yep. And also, you know, there's the old saying, "You're a monster, but you're my monster." Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm the one that lets the genie out of the bottle. Mm-hmm. You know, unless I'm not around, then you can. You can make your own decision, but as long as I'm, I, as long as I'm two feet up, yeah. I'm making the decisions for you. Yeah, yeah. interesting. I mean, I, I like the idea when I have know. control of you, but when you're when you're away from me, you can, you know, you, get you, over you, here. You need, yeah, but you need to make the decisions, you know, because yeah. you're going to be away from me on that area search. Yeah, yeah, right? for sure. And so you, the dog has to have some freedom of thought. Yeah, but also on those area searches, they're not in a muzzle, right? No, you would never put a dog in an area search in a muzzle. The only time is like I told you with that kid that was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll never say never, but that, that situation with that, with that, with that kid that uh, wanted to shoot himself. Yeah. But that was, uh, one time that happened and it, it worked well. It was the right option and it had a happy ending. And did you just think that up at the moment there? You were just like, okay, let's try sending a dog yeah. on the muzzle or is Yeah, it was you're... nothing I ever planned for, uh, wow. on, on that search. I was, we were talking, you know, how are we going to handle this? Because, you know, 16 year old kid or not, you yeah. know, that's a gun that's a military age male that could could yeah you know do something bad to you so yeah. uh, that that was the safest way to do it for him and because his safety was primary but also officer safety pr- is uh mm-hmm. it trumps everything yeah it should yeah yeah <clears throat> but have you heard of it being done again like have you ever heard of anybody else doing that technique uh i haven't personally heard about it but i'm not going to claim exclusivity ex- exclusivity exclusive, yeah that uh so there's there's maybe other people that are doing it that way i mean i've never heard of it yeah not that not that i'm the expert on it but i mean i think it's i think it's a really good thing for more people or police departments to know about that this can be done i mean that guy that has no backup you know that's a lonely place to be um you know there's scary people out there yeah and um you know if i if i will you know we were talking offline about things and police officers and how they're second guessed and uh a safe community um, and good policing. Again, it's like sausage. Mm-hmm. People don't want to watch it be made because sometimes it isn't pleasing to the eye. 
but everybody likes the taste. Tastes pretty good at the end. That's right. Yeah. And I, I, I want to live in a safe neighborhood with, with good police officers yeah. protecting me from the wolves. And it's something that, you know, I was just talking with Kenny about it. I talked with Goosby about it. I talked with Mike Reaver about it. And, you know, so much of the time people come down to this. They're just trying to, they're just trying to stoke the flames mm-hmm. and they get into this racist thing, you know, and it's something that drives me up a wall. I mean, and, and I'm not one to be talking about it, but I just, I, I, I can't stop myself because mm-hmm. you know what? We need to get away from this idea that things are divided by race or sexual content or, or ethnicity and all these things. And, and we need to get back to, hey, we're all just people. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're a bad guy, it doesn't matter if you're a black guy, white guy, if you're transgender, straight, or what, if you're wearing a dress with a gun or whatever, it doesn't matter. Or if you're a woman, you know, you need to look at the overall safety. And, and minority neighborhoods are at great, great risk, you know, and th- there's more police deployed there because there's more crime there. Mm-hmm. And when you start limiting police officers in those areas, and like they're they're trying to pass this bill in California now, and they're going to try to pass it in other areas. They're going to try to do away with police dogs in these areas. You're going to have a huge problem. You're going to have these areas. These direct areas will be directly affected mm-hmm. more so than this where I live mm-hmm. or where you live because mm-hmm. we live in we're, we're very blessed. We're fortunate to live in nice areas. Mm-hmm. But you start doing that, you're going to have more problems. And I feel sorry for these people. It's not fair. And I have to have faith that these good people are going to st- uh, stand forward because they're seeing what's happening in our country that they're yeah. going to, that they're going to step forward. Um, because it's ridiculous. You know, we at breakfast this morning, I was talking about how, uh, every profession has its blemishes. Sure. Uh, physicians, they make mistakes. <laughs> Airline pilots make mistakes. Police officers make mistakes, but what's, what's the difference? Uh, the difference is for the pilot and the doctor, there are absolutes and predictability. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe a malfunction of a, p- a piece of equipment. There's a, a way to fix that. Right. Uh, in police work, there is no absolutes. You don't know what you're going into. Uh, yeah. There's so many variables. But the police officers, these blemishes on society, when it comes to policing, these people are taking these blemishes and they're scratching them and aggravating them until they're gaping wounds. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's uh, sad, yeah. Um, you can second guess police officers, doctors, any profession, but you expect police officers who have the most unpredictable yeah. job in the world and that they have to make life altering decisions at the blink of an eye yeah. with no forethought. And, uh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, again, ridiculous. Well, police mm-hmm. departments, military. I mean, these are people, I mean, I think if you get a gun for your job, mm-hmm. you pretty much have a dangerous job, mm-hmm. you know? Accountants don't have that. They don't mm-hmm. get a gun to take to work because it's not that dangerous. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and when you see what these people have to go through, it's tough. Yeah. It's have you seen the YouTube of the people that are that are pimping the police officers, uh, setting the police officers up? Uh, they're being noncompliant. Uh, they're, they're, mm. I watched some of them where okay. uh, it's pretty big where uh, the police officer is approaching the car. The, guys, the guy immediately is insolent to the police officer, but he's not breaking the law. But remember, we're human. And uh, they're, they are poking and prodding, getting, getting reactions from the, from, from the officers. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's sad what's going on out there. I'm, I'm so glad that I'm not a police officer anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. I respect that. I love them. Mm-hmm. But I do too. God bless them, like bless uh, them. What, they're, what they're going through right now. Yeah. yeah. And these, yeah. These, these, uh, these people that are just stoking it and scratching the mm-hmm. blemishes. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Pretty yeah. bad. Not, not the not the society we were raised in. No, and and you know it's 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 it goes across the board. It's both parties. It's not limited to oh, one no, party. No, of course, not limited to one race. It's just a small yeah. group of people that yeah. are that are. Uh, Do you think that relates to? Because okay, so you said something too, and it, when 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 Mike Reaver was here, he talked about you know that's just not the way we were raised to, to talk. To. I mean, it was, for me, it was always yes or no, mm-hmm. sir. That's why I was raised. And, and I've been, I told you when I, the, my issue with the police that I had mm-hmm. before we started this, um, I, I, they were wrong. They were totally wrong. Mm-hmm. But I was going to let them be wrong and just be a gentleman about it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I think, and, and this is what I'm wondering, because this is a funny topic, and I was thinking about the other day, you know, dogs, dog behavior is so out of control with like dog aggression and, and dog bites and all this stuff. And I just often wonder, 
do you think it's because of the way kids are different now and people are different that they're so you know everybody's petting dogs in the face and they're you know this and that kids are like you know people aren't really disciplining their dogs or their children mm -hmm. and maybe part of that has to do with why we're seeing some more dog bites or more dogs in shelters or more dog aggression and all that stuff is there any do you think i have i have enough problems worried about me and mine you know like on how <laughs> my children and and uh um i don't know robert i don't know it's just uh it just seems like the craziness has started the past three or four years i agree and uh um, I just want to know where are the leaders? Where, where, where have the leaders gone? Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, I say that on both sides. Yeah. You know? But I, I see the police leadership uh, out there on most of these departments capitulating and, uh, and not defending their officers or... Um, mm -hmm. Parents not being good to their kids, raising their kids with discipline, yeah. you know? Take away the damn phones. Seriously. Social Go medias. outside and play. Climb a tree. Get the fight. Yeah, get in a fight, <laughs> you know, take your lumps, <laughs> yeah. and get off yeah. the phone. Yeah, and yeah. get rid of all this litigious stuff. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, uh, good thing we can't have kids together. Oh, <laughs> good looking. <laughs> Studs. Yeah. Studduses. <laughs>